quick revision video on the equilibrium constant Kc. So the first thing we'll look at is how do you write expressions for homogeneous equilibria. So there's a, an equilibria where everything's aqueous, so homogeneous, everything's in the same physical state. So Kc would be the equilibrium concentrations of the products and you raise them to the power that's balanced in the equation divided by the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants. So the little c in the case c represents the equilibrium concentrations and obviously these square brackets are used for that. Beware heterogeneous equilibria. So if you've got an equilibrium where you've got liquids in there as well or solids in there, their concentrations would be constant and so you leave them out of the expression. So move on to units of Kc. Now these can vary and it all depends on the powers in the expression. So we'll look at a couple of examples. Here's the first one. So the Kc expression would look like that. So the units would effectively be moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top divided by moles per decimeter cubed cubed on the bottom. That would cancel to 1 over moles per decimeter cubed and then we bring everything to the top and it becomes decimeters cubed per mole. Another one, so there's the equilibrium for the Haber process. So there's the Kc expression. So the units would effectively be moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top to the power 4 on the bottom. So that cancels down to 1 over moles per decimeter cubed squared and bringing everything to the top decimeters to the power 6, moles to the minus 2. And just before I move off this slide, I haven't got this one, but just to talk through, if you've got the same powers, top and bottom, then Kc would actually have no units. We'll look at some Kc calculations now, so we'll just talk through the different types and then I'll go through in detail the, the most difficult one. So if you're given the equilibrium concentrations, this is the easiest type, you just substitute the values straight into the Kc expression. You might be given the equilibrium moles and the volume of the reaction vessel, so you need to convert the moles to concentrations using the concentration equals moles over volume equation and then substitute into the Kc expression. So both of those are relatively straightforward. If you're given the initial moles and the moles of either a reactant or product at equilibrium, then you need to use what I call the ICE method. I'm going to go through that in a second. So we use this method to calculate the equilibrium moles and then if we're given the volume of the vessel we'll need to turn those into concentrations. So we'll look at one of those now. So we're told the initial moles of nitrogen and hydrogen, we're told the reaction vessel volume is 2 decimeters cubed and at equilibrium we've got 1.76 moles of ammonia being formed calculate Kc. So we use the ICE method and the I stands for initial moles. So the initial moles of nitrogen are 3.28, hydrogen 6.64 and we wouldn't have any ammonia initially. We then skip to the equilibrium moles because we're told that at equilibrium we've got 1.76 moles of ammonia. So there's been a change in moles of plus 1.76 or an increase of 1.76 for the ammonia. So now we need to bring in the mole ratios. So if we look at the nitrogen, so for nitrogen to produce 1.76 moles of ammonia, half as much needs to react and so it's going to drop by 0.88. And moving on to the hydrogen, you can see a 3 to 2 ratio there. So to produce 1.76 moles of ammonia, we need 1.5 or 3 over 2 times that of hydrogen, and that comes out at 2.64. So hydrogen's moles will drop by 2.64. So now we know the change, we can work out the differences, and that's going to give us the equilibrium moles. So it's 2.40 for nitrogen and 4 for hydrogen. Equilibrium concentrations now, so we just divide those moles by the volume of 2 decimeters cubed and we get those numbers there. So then we'd put them into the Kc expression and we get a value of 
0 0.0807 decimeters to the 6 mol to the minus 2. The final couple of slides is going to look at um, changes in conditions on the value of Kc. The first thing to say is that the value of Kc is only affected by temperature. So we'll start with this one, exothermic forwards reaction. So basically Chatelier's principle tells us that if you increase the temperature, it will favour the endothermic reaction direction. And so this one's going to move backwards. It's going to give us more reactants than we had at the start, fewer products, and so Kc will decrease. An endothermic forward reaction now, and that's going to do the opposite of the first one. So if you increase the temperature, it will favour the endothermic direction, which is obviously the forwards direction. It's going to give us more moles of the product than we had before, and fewer moles of the reactants, and so Kc will increase. And then finally, we're going to look at explaining the equilibrium shift for a change in concentration. Remember, Kc is only affected by the temperature, so concentration changes don't change the value of Kc, and that's at the very heart of what I'm going to look at now. So we'll use this equilibrium here, and we're told that at constant temperature, it was found that Kc had that value of 16.0 moles per decimeters cubed. So the Kc expression looks like that. So let's suppose that while at the same temperature, the concentration of the N2O4 was increased. So what's that going to do? That's going to increase this denominator term in the Kc expression. So it's actually going to change the value of Kc. It's going to make it less than it was before. Now remember, Kc can't change. It's the same temperature. So the equilibrium needs to shift to bring Kc back to that value of 16. Well, how does it do that? It needs to make the numerator term larger. How does the equilibrium do that? It shifts forwards. So to restore Kc, the NO2 concentration needs to increase, and it does that by shifting right.